We've seen a surprising lack of regional forms thus far for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. In fact, at time of writing, we've only seen one, that being Paldean Wooper. Huh? They've just revealed a new Diglett. It's not Diglett? Wiglet. Alright, let's change up the plan then. So, I was midway through writing a script about whether regional variants like Paldean Wooper should really be considered the same species of Pokemon or not. But now we have this stretchy little fella that brings a whole new twist to the subject. Bringing us to today's question, why is Wiglet not a form of Diglett? At the point of writing, there's not a whole lot of information about Wiglet. We know it's a water type and we know it's got a great sense of smell and it's not Diglett. That seems to be the main focus of the information we've had so far. We do know a little bit more about the only Paldean regional form we have though, which is Wooper. Paldean Wooper is a ground and poison type, having lost its water typing when it was driven away from the ponds and rivers of Paldea by another Pokemon in ancient times. The poisonous film it covers its body with is something that regular Wooper also utilizes to stop their bodies drying out whilst they're on land. But after such a prolonged period of time living exclusively on land and in bogs, Paldean Wooper's gills have hardened over, meaning it's no longer amphibious. So I ask again, why can this still be considered Wooper, but Wiglet is not a Diglet? Let's look at how we classify species within our own world. What separates an elephant from a penguin? Well, a lot. But what separates a lion from a tiger? Maybe less than you'd think. This particular science for naming and categorizing organisms is called taxonomy, which separates all living things into these categories. Life, domain, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, and species. And luckily for us, we're only looking at that very bottom rung. Many taxonomists have tried to define exactly what a species is, but the most accepted definition is still the biological species concept of Ernst Mayer who stated that species are groups of actually or potentially interbreeding natural populations, which are reproductively isolated from other such groups. In layman's terms, if an organism can successfully produce fertile offspring with another organism, then they must be of the same species. When it comes to animals, this works pretty well. A horse and a lion couldn't produce offspring, so they're clearly not the same species. But a horse and a donkey could produce offspring, giving us a mule, a hybrid of the two. However, this hybrid cannot breed with either horses, donkeys, or even other mules to produce any offspring at all. It's infertile, and therefore we can say that donkeys and horses are indeed different species. It all seems very simple, until we go back to lions and tigers. Two animals that, whilst in captivity, have been successfully bred to produce ligers and tigons, which themselves are actually capable of further reproduction. So what does this mean? Are lions and tigers actually the same species? Or was Ernst wrong with his concept? Well, Mayer's definition works best in the wild, where lions and tigers would be isolated from each other, meaning hybridization would never naturally occur. It's usually only with human intervention that we discover the ability for animals from entirely different parts of the globe to interbreed. As such, it's still the framework for how we define species today. That being said, some of you may have already realized the flaw when it comes to using this definition for Pokemon, egg groups. Pokemon don't just breed within their own species, but when left at the daycare, they can in fact interbreed with any Pokemon who share at least one of their egg groups. This leads to ridiculous situations like the infamous Skitty and Whale Lord breeding pair. Then there's Ditto that can breed with any Pokemon outside of the undiscovered egg group, which includes mostly legendary Pokemon that we know do have eggs, but have yet to successfully breed them whilst in captivity. So given all that, why does it matter if Paldean Wooper and Wiglet are regional forms or not? In fact, if we can't even come up with a concrete definition of species in our own real world, why do we bother? Well, other than our drive to understand things and where they come from, this level of definition helps us when it comes to work in conservation. Lions are considered to be vulnerable. Their natural population size has decreased by 75%, whereas tigers are endangered. 95% of their population is gone and serious intervention is required if we still want to see them in our future. The fact that they are two different species allows the International Union for the Conservation of Nature to more accurately delegate money and resources to species who are in more dire need of it as well as accurately monitor the remaining population. Let's go back to Paldea and Wooper and Wiglet. In the Hoenn region, Wooper and Quagsire can both be found within the Safari Zone, an area that can be seen to be for conservation purposes of rare Pokemon in any particular region. As 
Any you find there will not usually be available anywhere else in the wild. Theoretically, if a group of Paldean Wooper were discovered or brought over to Hoenn, they would have the same protections afforded to them as the Johto form, as they are both classified as the same species. But should a Wiglet make its way to Johto, where Diglett are kept in the Safari Zone, they couldn't expect the same treatment. So now we know why differentiating species is important, we're once again stuck with exactly how to differentiate Pokemon species. There is another method commonly used in our world, besides the BSC, which is often utilized by paleontologists, who, for obvious reasons, have great difficulty noting the breeding patterns of the creatures they're studying. Instead, they use the morphology of different organisms in order to define them. Morphology refers to the particular traits and characteristics of a given organism. Size, shape, structure, etc. Using lions and tigers again, male lions have that distinctive mane, which tigers lack. And tigers, of course, have those gorgeous stripes. The problem is, of course, that we're having this whole discussion simply because Wiglet does look like Diglett. They both burrow underground, and only their head rises above the surface, as well as the fact that they both have a similar, if not exactly the same, derpy face. The only difference we've really seen so far is their coloration, their habitat, with Wiglet living close to the ocean, and Wiglet's ability to stretch itself upwards. And other than that final difference, all of those also hold true for Paldean Wooper when compared to its Johto counterpart. So what's going on here? You may have heard other theorists talk about convergent evolution, the phenomenon where two completely separate species develop comparable traits in order to survive in similar ecological niches. Yet, despite this, they share no common ancestor. That lack of common ancestry is perhaps the most important factor when it comes to differentiating species of Pokemon. As we stated earlier, Paldean Wooper directly derived from the more common Wooper variety and has merely been forced to adapt to its new environment. That being said, though, that kind of adaptation to one's environment is exactly what led to the theory of evolution, as in real-world evolution, not Pokemon evolution. You may have heard of Darwin's finches, a collection of differing species of birds across multiple islands in the Galapagos. Charles Darwin realized that the different morphology of these birds, most notably their beaks, were results of adaptation to their environment and available food source. From there, he surmised that they were likely initially one species that evolved over time to better suit and survive the isolated environments they found themselves in. But we're left, once again, with the question then, if adaptation to one's environment results in a new species, then why is Paldean Wooper still a Wooper? What allows it to remain classified as a different form, or what we would consider in our world a subspecies? There is in fact an answer. A defining trait that professors and researchers in the Pokemon universe would use to categorize these regional variants as just that. The answer lies once again with eggs. Not egg groups, as we discussed earlier the issue with that, but specific eggs derived from each Pokemon. Brief explanation for how breeding works within Pokemon for any of you who need it. Two Pokemon left at the daycare center, who share at least one common egg group, will produce an egg. The Pokemon that hatches from the egg will be the same species as the mother, or if there is a ditto involved, the parent that is not the ditto. A fascinating instance occurs though, when it comes to regional forms. If the mother of the breeding pair happens to have a regional variant for the particular region where the egg is hatched, then the hatched Pokemon will be the regional form regardless of the parent's form. This means a Cantonian Meowth in Alola will produce an egg of an Alolan Meowth. Even in Galar, where Galar and Meowth don't even evolve into Persian. Should you breed a Cantonian Meowth whilst in the region, a Galarian Meowth will hatch. You can circumvent this phenomenon by giving the parent who shares the form you wish the hatched Pokemon to have an Everstone. Why that works is a whole different video, but there you have it. It is as simple as that. A Wooper brought over to the Paldea region, who is not given an Everstone during breeding, would produce a Paldean Wooper as its offspring, whereas a Wiglet will never give you a Diglett from an egg. Of course, suggesting that the Wiglet is the mother in this case, I do wonder if Wiglet and Diglett will end up in the same egg group, which of course would mean they could breed, which suggests some form of common ancestry, distant or otherwise. I'm, I'm going off tangent here. Let me know your thoughts on all this in the comments below, because that's going to do it for today, guys. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you join me again on the next one. But until then, I'll catch you later. Continuing to make these videos would not be possible without the help from our channel members, and especially our Mega Tier members. Thank you.